Welcome to this episode of Inside Oriel in association with Bet Regal. I'm delighted to say, I think this is your first time joined by John Mountney. First time in Inside Oriel, yeah. Yeah, in Inside Oriel, yeah. We weren't on the sofa. Did, did you chat to me on the sofa last year? I was on the sofa. Last time I was here, I was telling you how I was, wasn't going to get surgery on the knee and I was ready to play. That's right, yeah. I think we deleted all those, all trace of those videos yeah. from YouTube. How's, uh, I was going to say, how's the injury? But you're back in the squad against Derry, so it's obviously coming on. A lot faster than probably what you expected, is it? Yeah, in a good place, Gav. Um, the last time we spoke, we had mentioned about trying to avoid surgery, but as it turned out, and we, um, myself and Danny Miller, went to meet a few different people to find out a bit further about it. Um, realistically, it wasn't possible to return without getting it done. So, yeah, I got under a knife, and we're exactly six months now. I'm back in fully training, and like you said, it was a big boost being involved in the squad. Even though we were short bodies, it was still brilliant for myself, just to be involved in uh, the match day again. When, so w- when did you have an idea you might be involved against Derry? Did Stevie tell you the day before or did you know building up to it? No, well in training we were a couple of bodies down um, when I was training that day and I thought to myself, wow, could I be on the bench here? Because we're short bodies, but I never, you know, I was just being optimistic looking at it. But I didn't know until our, we came up on match day and um, Stephen done the, the team talk and then announced me on the, squ- on the bench. Six months, that's that's good going, isn't it? I'm mm. not I'm not a surgeon by any means, but that, <laughs> that's, not that's yeah, you know what I mean, Janine. That's that's good going, I think. Yeah, well the plan is having done the right knee the year before, um when we were sitting down, myself and Danny and of course Connor as well, we were looking at sort of targets and, and what was the possibilities of it and it was to put myself in a position of you know, coming back quicker than the last one and the last one I think was seven months mm. with a couple of complications for the first few weeks. Uh, so yeah, this time we'd done the strength test early and we put in the work sort of, you know, going into it and, and obviously we got a positive result then in terms of the strength was all within 5% of each other on the five-month test. So we ticked all the boxes so there was nothing really stopping us to return return to full training. Yeah. Tell me, tell me about the injury because obviously we were in here just after you'd done it. After being out for so long, getting back towards the end of last season, played 12 games, I think it was, in, in all competitions. You come in over the winter, you're doing a lot of stuff in here, building up the pre-season, and then first bloody game of the, mm. the year, you go down and do the other knee. What, what's... Yeah, tough, of course, tough at the start. You know, you go through the first few days, you're, your head's in the bin, there's no denying it, but then I suppose you have to look at it. Even our own manager has said it to us that, you know, your career is, is, is ups and downs, and once you accept that, you know, you can get over these sort of situations. Um, so I looked at it with a positive mindset as soon as I came off the out of the operation the day after. Like it was just sort of, you know, embrace the struggle of the next few months. And, and like I said, having done the knee the year before, I had a target to get back better timing to sort of improve everything. So, you know, that, that side was tough. Of course, you have tough days. You're coming in every day. The lads are, are on the pitch and you're in here and then you're down to Felda as well, early mornings and late evenings trying to get triple sessions done. But... Like that, when you put it in, that we got the rewards. So, um, you know, it was well worth it. And like I said, it was just a, a struggle, but we embraced it. And I suppose um, now we're the right side of it, all going well. If, I'm not just saying it because you're here. You, you obviously built the strong stuff because you did. Well, I wouldn't be if I was well, well, under the knife more than did, anyone else. You did the op- <laughs> well, you did the opposite of me the year before. Yeah. Surely you must have been thinking, Jesus, like, you know what I mean? What's what's going on? How unlucky am I? Like, I'm, I'm sure there was a, mm. a, a couple of days you're thinking, I'm sick of this like you know what I mean of course like everyone goes through things in life and of course you, you know you'll, you'll, you'll feel sorry for yourself but everything's always put in perspective uh, I have a friend back home I won't mention his name but I remember I was in my whatsapp group I think it was when I'd done my knee and I was looking in the whatsapp group scrolling down something had happened there was a lot of messages and yeah. turns out one of my friends back home was in a terrible car accident and was lucky to survive it Um had to get his leg operated in three different areas, like, you know, Jeez. lucky to, yeah. he's still limping to this day, and it was the same time i done my knee, so things are always put in perspective, you know what I mean, so I had no time to, I couldn't feel sorry for myself, and like that, I knew the path to, to return, and the medical team we have here, obviously, is, is excellent, you know, and Danny, that sort of gave me a lot of confidence to to push with Danny, Danny's support, um, and obviously Connor as well, so, uh, you know, once you just accept it, you just... Get on with it. I know it sounds weird and probably ridiculous saying it, but the fact you'd done it the, the year before and come back was it was you, you sort of were, you were down that road before. Did it not e- not make it easier? But the fact that you've you came through it once did it make you think right? Okay, I know how to do this. I know how to get back. Let's just let's just go again. Yeah, I think that was definitely the the thought behind it was like you said you had targets to to improve on, so it definitely it definitely helped and. 
I remember doing the first thing you, you always hear of athletes or different players you play with in your career that will say to you, I've done it, you know, you'll find this tough, you'll find that tough and they'll, they'll help you sort of through it with a bit of advice from their own. But like you said, having it so fresh in my mind from just going through it, it was a case of just get your head down and, and get the work done. And of course, I'm lucky too because you see the facilities we have here in the gym and, and like I mentioned, the, the staff with the programmes we're getting, but then also we have the facilities that we're lucky enough that Felda let us use. So Morris and I, Robert yeah, yeah, they're bringing the down there. Yeah. So um, I had access to Felda all the time as well, which was massive, massive boost. Was there a difference in the in the, in the injuries in the two knees? Did you, was one worse than the other or was it a different feel? Or no, it was, I think it was similar. similar. Fact, similar. Yeah, no, I was lucky too because I've heard of other lads doing their knees and, and doing a lot of other stuff with it where mine was, it was straightforward, it was just ACL. Rehab, sort of, yeah. It was the most innocuous thing in the world, wasn't it? Ah, it was some look back. Cross field pass, you, you miscontrolled it. <laughs> miscontrolled it. And I know, it was <laughs> actually a ping from the fullback to their thing. I was just pressing them, yeah, and the sun got my eye. I remember it, yeah. But, um, it's massive boost now. Like I said, back in, the target was, can I get back training before the end of the season? And if I get any minutes here to the end of the season, that's just a massive a massive bonus. But to be in training now with the lads and involved is, is brilliant for the running because, of course, the last two results have been disappointing for us. But I think if you're looking at it as a football fan, it's actually been really good. The last two games I thought we were excellent. So it's great coming back in. The standard and training is really high and you can see there's a demand. Um, so it's a good time to be coming back in. As, as demand says, it's all well and good doing your stuff in the gym, but it's not until you're back yeah. out there with the, the lads you feel properly exactly, yeah, a part yeah. of it. yeah. Exactly, yeah. That's when you, you feel your most is on the pitch. That's where you can affect it. You can, everyone can see things and, and, and say things, but you to be out and experience it is, is a different thing. Yeah. As you say it, our last two performances, there'll be no game this week, the internationals are on, but I think a lot of us went home last Friday night after the Derry game wondering, you know, mm. what, what happened there. Like, well, Yeah, you look at any team that has 70%, 72%, I think, possession, like, you, I think we nearly 20 shots, mm. you know, you're just expected to go and win. So, like I said, it was a really positive performance by us and great mindset by the lads that were on the pitch to, when we went 3-0 down, like such a sucker punch to stay going. You know, I think everyone that was there seen... It's what you want to see from the team you follow is that they never give up and you see that side of us. So the next step now is is just not to give away goals. That's 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 killing us, isn't it? Defensively, we're just we're just leaking too many goals. Just goals, yeah. Just if we just tidy up on that side of it, uh, which we're we're very close to, um, you know, playing on them performances. Majority of the time, you'll get your results. Yeah, what a game to come back the next next Friday back to back to Galway for a cup tie. Good memories of Galway in the cup. Yeah. Do you remember scoring against him in 2014? You're testing. That was up here, was it? I looked it. I looked it up. Looked it up, and the match report came up saying Donald McDermott's first goal for the dog, and a screamer from John Mertney. Oh yes, here sure wasn't Stephen, it? Yeah. yeah, Stephen Kenny said the place in a fourth successful quarter final. That was in 2014. Jeez, you're going back a bit. I can't there, remember yeah. to be honest with you. Yeah, I remember Galway because they done us. Remember we bet Bate to qualify for the groups the first year, and then we came back to play Galway in the league, and they turned us over down there. So. It's not an easy place, you know. No. They're, they're a good side, and you can see what they're doing in the Division One. You know, they're flying it down there, and you look at John Caulfield and um, Ali, Ali as well. The two, act, yeah, the two of them involved. Yeah. So of course they're going to be, they're going to have first um, Premier League experience. You know, manager and even players that uh, can play at that level. So it'll be it'll be a good battle for us. I was looking as well. Do you remember twenty fifteen League Cup semi final? Penos. The better than penos, yeah. yeah. Penos, I do. Yeah, we went out in penalties. Could have went and done the travel. The travel, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, so there's always something to to prove, isn't there? That, as you say, they're flying as well. Mm. It's ironic they were beaten last week by, by Longford, but I suppose we similar last year when we met the Waterford and Wexford in the Cup. We, we know what they expect exactly, sort of first yeah. division. You know, you know what they're going to be, especially Galway flying mm. top of the league, they're going to win the league. It's going to be it's going to be a tough game. Yeah, it'll be tough. Like you said, we're down to Wexford last year who were very well organised, if you remember. We were very lucky to get to get through that game in the Cup, so it'll be the same in, in terms of like there's no easy game. But this is their cup final, you know, have, like having done Dock at home. So um, I suppose the good thing is now we've plenty of time to prepare and, and, you know, get our standards as high as we can going into it. Quarter final stage now, a couple of wins away from the Aviva. Mm. It's, it was uh, everything we mentioned. <coughs> I, I, I keep saying, but I don't think we really are lucky we were going up there for, for yeah. five, six years on the trot. It was unbelievable, wasn't it? You just take it for granted, don't mm. you? Because we, we just had the success, you know, rolling in and out every year. So to get there is it's the best day out in, in the domestically in the league so or in the in the year so yeah I think there's lads that are here that you know there's a lot of times you rock up to, to grounds in the league you know you rock up to Tala full full ground like it feels like you're a proper player do you know and and I suppose the best experience of that is the Aviva do you know all your friends found you there you're you're coming up to the national stadium on a carpet of a surface 
you know, 30, 40,000 live in RTE. So I think it's every player in the league who plays, whether it's Division 1 or the, the Premier, that looks at that and says, like, what you know, what you do to get there. So, you know, fingers crossed we can we can go down to Galway and, and come out with a positive result. Uh, t- it's Marvin, we were just talking about how spoiled we were. Your last two games, you think before you left in the end of 2020, your last two games for Dundalk were... The cup final against Rovers and then Arsenal the Viva. Like you played the yeah. Viva twice and should have retired after that. In the space of four, <laughs> got out in top, got out in the, <laughs> twice in the space of four days. Like yeah. it was just, it was mad. Like it was brilliant. Yeah, it was. It was great times. Yeah, the only thing we missed obviously was the fans, wasn't yeah, it? There's no yeah. fans there, so we missed out the atmosphere wise. But yeah, of course, the play in those games was uh, incredible, and it's where the club. I'm sure every club you know that wins their league gets to play in the Champions League or finishes top four or Europa League. It's Europa League Conference, it's everyone's ambition is to get to those stages, you know, and play in those games. I remember that after the Arsenal game, I remember you said you could buy easy, you, you sort of... After everything. a few drinks? After, no, no, I think it was before, it was before. Uh, there was COVID back then, so there was no yeah. drinking a lid, John. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, when did you know at that stage that you were... You were like, it's hard to believe you could, a lot of lots happened since happened, you yeah, come back. Course. But when did you, when did you decide that that season, listen, I'm done here because you know we're Europa League group stages, cup final, mm. still there, thereabouts in league. It was a big decision at the time. There, it was, yeah, leave. it was. It was tough. It was more a um, tough decision emotionally, um, because you know being so long at the club mm. and and you know having lived here and been here since eighteen, like and gone through all the success, and it was at a time we were successful to leave. But um, of course, Steve Nodon was the manager at the time at St Pat's, and I had been speaking to. You know, to Stephen about you know he was talking about his plans and I knew what he was like as a player and what he what he demand from me as a manager and I suppose I ghosted through that year. There was no real demands. You know, you could see things behind the scenes weren't going the right way. The club hadn't contacted me. Um, I remember I was getting the bus back. I think I was the only one on the bus because I decided not to. I don't know. I wasn't going out, but I ended up being the only one on the bus, sort of going back or going into. Could have been going into train or something, but I remember the manager at the time, Philippe, came down to me and just like said to me. Um, we're you know we're going to be animals next year and I was thinking that like it was just very naive like the season had finished yeah yeah and you know what I mean that was the only contact I had got even yeah. before you know signing for uh, for St Pat's so it was just all a bit up in the air it was all a bit messy um I knew I needed a new challenge Stephen seen me as uh, stepping on as a right back rather than a right winger and it was a new challenge for me and exciting and I think anyone that knows the manager um would be excited by playing under him so that's the the reason I took the the sort of the leap. There'll be books written about it, I'm sure, in years to come. But could you see? Could I think if anybody, I think if you if you're here in 2021, you left. I think everybody would have said, "Yeah, I can understand that." But yeah. did you did you see see what was coming down the tracks? No, I don't think. No, I didn't. But then when like I didn't really hear it even around town. I didn't really hear. Did you hear your manager uh, Stephen Adon was linked at the time? I didn't know much. But then once I did get wind of it, I remember just thinking like, you know, please take me with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but because like that's the reason I went to to. All respect to him. That's the reason I went there was because of the manager, and you know that was the only reason I would left the club. So when I heard he was coming back, you know, I was just hoping the same as anyone else. You'd get that phone call, and I know lads were in the same boat here. I know Andy Boyle, Darren Leahy, and more lads were in contract. And when they heard the rumor, they were all just saying like, "Please let it be true and let it happen." When you look back and all that, it's it's like ten years next year since the first league title under under Stephen Kenny, and we're approaching that sort of it'd be a decade since this and that. Mm. Do you, talking to Dan Massey and stuff recently and all those lads, do you, was it sad the way it sort of came to an end? you think it could have prolonged it for another couple of years? Or That's all good in hindsight looking yeah. back at it, but like, sort of, it, it was what it was and, you know, things always happen and change and like that, you just have to adapt and sort of, the biggest thing is to stay positive because it was mm-hmm. tough for all of us that were used of everything being run so well, not even like, I suppose it was player ran as well, the lads, yeah, all yeah. the group were good, but, it was remain, remaining positive when there was such negative news in the background of managers leaving and t- owners taking over and you know they weren't really doing well let's say with the there wasn't really connection at times during the club with the, the club and the fans and yeah. stuff like that so I think the big thing was to try and stay positive because things change but um, if you look at all the success during that period like you know if you take the you take them nose all day with the with yeah. the highs we had during during those times I think the hardest the hardest part of it's trying to adapt now and to, to get back on mm. the top of the mountain, that's the that's the challenge for us all now. Is the you know we've 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 come off the top, but we we need to get back there. That's and it, that can be that can be hard for people to get their head around when you've been top mm. for so long, isn't it? Of course, but we all have points to prove. You know, mm. new lads coming in, 
brilliant talent been signed and then like you said the, the lads who've been here who've had success it's, it's the same challenge for us all we want to get get to that level and and it's not as easy now whereas back then we got our edge the first year we won the league from just being fitness wise being machines if you mm -hmm. remember you know there was a real edge there wasn't really that side of it in the league at that time but whereas now you know everything's sort of covered you know players are signed two three year deals so it's not even as easy to sign yeah in your in your window so it's it's a tougher challenge and and you can see the standards have gone up in all clubs all clubs are looking to sort of to be that club you know that rovers have been the last few years so um I like to think it's in a good place now. Everything's been done right. Like I said, the management, the demands, the players, everything's been um, been done right. So I can only see it going one direction. It's up. Yeah, yeah. Fingers crossed. Since the last time we've spoken to you, you're the proud owner of a pub <laughs> back in back in the west. Yeah, yeah. I think it was yeah. always on the cards, was it? Yeah, we have a family pub. Yeah. Um, Mam took it over. We actually, Mam moved over from London and took us all over and I think it was 97 I was reading there's a brilliant article mm. in the Western Western People newspaper mm. did, did, a, did an article with you back in May it was brilliant did, did, you know a lot, yeah. of, a lot of sort of did you see your mum come over in London yeah did on a nice spread actually the Western yeah, People on good. it but yeah she came over and took it over so it was needed somewhere to raise the family and have an income and that was it F uh, five of us in the family I'm the youngest and I was getting to the stage mum hit retirement age who was going to take it over and there was only interest really between me and my brother is in Canada, so I was only delighted to say, ma'am, I'll give it a go. Of course, I'm playing football, but I'll, you know, try and employ and, and keep uh, keep it afloat yeah. for a few years and see how that goes. So um, that's been a great distraction for me, along with the the, re the prehab, do you know what I mean? Having a separate separate focus I was, was, gonna, I was, was massive. I, I was going to um, ask you that. Is it, is it, it must be... Your, your mind's just not consumed mm. on the injury of football you've got something else made it. of course look I'm still emotionally invested in with the lads when I'm in here and I'm, I'm still in here all the time but what it meant was you know if I'm playing you don't get to go home whereas if we had a day off on a Saturday I might go home if there was something on um, and then like that it was work to be done on the laptop and orders and stuff like that I suppose and staying on top of it but it was a great distraction and, and it's a uh, you know I was proud to take it over because like that my mum blood sweat and tears into the place and you know, good characters in our community. It's a good area. There's good crack. Um, so yeah, it's been really good since since taking it over. How is the how is the, the how is life in Bohola? Because you hear hear a lot of things about little towns and villages around the country sort of hit by tourism and things of like that. Is it how's it going down now? Yeah, we've been all right, but we're probably lucky. It's just like I, I described to everyone. It's a small anyone who hasn't been to Bohola. It's a small village. Yeah. in uh, sort of the middle of of sort of central of Mayo, um, but. It's a little village, but not rural in the sense that we have a main road going through it. Right, you know, okay. the Dublin Westport Road goes past Bahola, so there's always passing trade. Uh, so there is, yeah. In the summer, we have the B and B above the pub. Summertime is always full tourists on the way to Ackle, Westport, Kong, Knock. Uh, so yeah, it does, it does, it does all right, yeah. And like that, there's there's the pub next door to us. Um, so there's big good crack, yeah. So those three pubs, is that the? There was the, is yeah. the, was it Brendan Bean, was it? Or Bre or Brendan Shine, sorry, yeah, Brendan Shine. Yeah. It was three. Three pubs in Bohola. Mickey used to play it on Friday nights. Did you used to play? shout out and play three pubs in Bohola. Well, yeah. It'd be on your playlist, would it? If you're <laughs> selecting the music before the game. I was yeah. reading at Gaza and the Spurs team were in it in Correct, 89, yeah. yeah. I think that, well, the story goes, it was before my time, but uh, the story goes that Gaza and a few of them, they were playing football in Ireland at the time and they were meant to go on a fishing trip. And their fishing trip, the, see we're beside, the River Moy is in Foxford and the River Guishan is just leading on to it. It's only five minutes from Bohola. So the rumours were he went for a fishing trip and they, they called it off early doors and went up to the, the three pubs in Bohola and got p pissed for the night, if sounds, I can say that. Sounds like a Gaza, yeah. like a Gaza story. Any other famous? Well, Martin Sheridan is from our village. Right, okay. um, obviously five-time Olympic, uh, Olympic uh, medalist, but he represented New York, had to leave, um, obviously during the, the trouble, during... Which is what you'll have to check the research here in the years and gone blank. But he had to leave, obviously, like like so many for work. Went to New York at sixteen and represented um, America in the Olympics. And so he'd be the most fight. he'd be more famous. You or him? Oh Jesus! No, there's no um, <laughs> no comparison there. <laughs> but then yeah, there's connection with Michael Collins too. So there's a few interesting connections in Bohol. Yeah. yeah. Do you enjoy it? I love it. Yeah. I'd say it's something. Love yeah. it. It's it's always been my home. It's where I grew up. My friends are still all there, so I love it. You know, I love any chance we get a weekend off, just getting home, catching up, and. Um, like I said, always go crack. Everyone's easy going, and it's worlds like apart from worlds done. apart from the dog. <laughs> no, the dog's similar too. In terms, <laughs> they probably enjoy themselves too much up yeah. here. That's the problem. Yeah. yeah. Where will you Where will you settle when retirement comes? Jesus, Shannon, if you're listening, behold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't want to put Don't want to put you under pressure. Yeah, I don't know yet. Um, 
it's hard to call like that. I love getting home, but that's been my life, you know. And then my obviously my my life in the dock has been the football and and my wife Shannon. So um, you know, it's it's hard to know yet. But either way, that'll be ball hole will always be home anyway, sort of. And you have a big period coming up now between now and the start of next year, and all. Yeah, say I was saying as well, Shannon. Um, we were actually it was the day before we have the break in the season. Right, and okay. Because I was injured, I ended up having one or two extra days off. So I said to Shannon, right, we'll go on a, a proper holiday because we'll, we'll be trying for a family. We won't get a chance to go in November. So it was actually, we were playing Cork, I think, the night before the break. And our flight was in the morning to go out to Nashville. And then she came home with the little, um, the little <laughs> pregnancy test. Yeah, so it was a great surprise. Very good. So we found out, yeah. Um, so I think she's about 18 weeks now. Excellent. Um, due in February, yeah. So Very exciting good. times. Best of luck. How was... Uh, so I'll be under serious pressure. Never mind getting home the ball. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I seen your... Uh, when you're when you're away, look, Nashville and all, you enjoy that? Good good, good spot yeah, to go? Yeah, I do, I do. Um, I grew up, I love folk music. Like, yeah. you know, I grew up, I loved like the, the Willie Nelson, Johnny Cash, Waylon Jennings, you know, them sort of... I always say outlaw outlaw country to Shannon, but she's like, will you grow up? Yeah. But yeah, I love all that sort of stuff. So you know, once, was, upon cool. th- once upon a time, I would have laughed at you, John, but I started watching Yellowstone. Yeah, well, all that And I swear stuff, to God, yeah. I'm absolutely obsessed. Yeah. Obsessed. Well, all that music now, like everyone's listening to, you know, Zach Bryan and Tyler Childers and all it's, that sort of stuff. It's all stuff, I'm yeah. listening to. It's things have been true. So I enjoyed it, but imagine, Shannon doesn't like country, so imagine her then <sighs> sitting in a pub. Obviously, I'm probably, I'm injured at the time, I'm on my mid-season break, I'm well on it. Yeah. And then this country music just blaring out the roof and she's just cracking up. Holiday. So yeah, it was a an enjoyable holiday if you ask me. For her, maybe not. So different much. story. Yeah, different story. Yeah. yeah, different story. Well, the very best of luck, these. Thanks very much, Gavin. And uh, thanks for coming in. Um, it's great to see you back in the squad, and hopefully we see you back in the pitch. Lovely. Soon enough. Appreciate Love it, John. Thanks, Gav. Cheers. Thanks a million.